Hey, what's up, gang? We want to welcome you guys out tonight to our Victory Outreach Barstow Gang Service. We want to encourage you to share this video right now. We're on YouTube and we're also on Facebook. Share it, host a watch party. Let everybody know that we're having gang service tonight. We're going to go ahead and start. We're going to sing um, a few uh, praise and worship songs. So if you can go ahead and stand up right there where you're at in your home, we're going to go ahead and praise them tonight. Let's just take a moment to remove all distractions aside 
no checking our text messages or our notifications, but let's take a moment to give God the honor and the glory that he deserves on this Good Friday. So right there where you're at, let's just bow our heads and close our eyes and just begin to worship him. Oh, let's just come to him with gratefulness in our heart. His Jesus, we thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. Let's lift our hands to him.
right where you're at. Let's just invite him into our homes. I believe he's here in this place. I believe his presence is here in this place. But I believe he wants to come into that room. I believe he wants to get personal with God's anointed now generation. Here tonight, you want to let him just come. Lift your hands. Begin to meditate on his presence. Begin to meditate on his love. Begin to ask him, God, come into my life and show me. God, I need you here tonight. God, I need a word from you here tonight. I believe God's anointed now generation. God has a word for you, but you got to let him speak to you. You got to prepare your heart and your mind and let him touch you right where you're at. Come on, let him fill you up right now. Oh, we worship you. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Oh, we love on you. Oh, it's all about you, Lord. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Father God, I pray right now. God, Lord, as they're tuning in here tonight, God, I pray you meet them in a special way. I pray, Lord God, that your presence not only would be felt here, God, but be felt all around, God. And anyone who's tuning in on Facebook, God, or on YouTube, God, I pray, Lord God, you would allow them, God, even now, God, to feel your love and your power, God. I believe God's anointed now generation. God, you're calling, God, to rise up, God. They're calling them, God, to hear your voice, my God. And I believe they're going to hear you tonight. I believe you're giving them, my brother Edgar, God, a word. And I pray even now to anoint him, God, to continue to anoint. God, everything, God, Lord Jesus, that's going to take place tonight, God. I believe you, God, have everything in your hands. So even now we place it in your hands and we thank you, Father. We praise you and we love you. In Jesus' name. Come on now. And the gang said amen. Hallelujah. Come on now. You guys excited? Amen. Again, we can't hear you. So we want you to continue, God, to... To, to connect with us, and you can write down in the live chat, you could post up your thumbs ups, your amens, we want to communicate with you, amen, so we want to encourage you to do that, that way we can follow along, we can't, like I said, we can't hear you here, we want to hear your, re your, your response, we want to hear everything that I believe God wants to speak to you here tonight, we want to in interact with you, so I encourage you to do that again, share, share to your family, share to your loved ones, text message somebody, you can, you can send them the link. You can send them the YouTube link, the Facebook. You can share it. You can start a, uh, a live chat. Come on now. Amen. But we want to encourage you to do that. But again, we want to welcome you out to, to here tonight. Our God's anointed now generation, our gang night. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Again, on behalf of Pastor Abel and Sister Raina and my brother Edgar. Come on now. And Sister Kelly. I got a few announcements for you guys. But you guys may be seated. Wherever you guys are at, maybe you guys are standing, maybe you guys really, come on now, we're worshiping God at this moment, come on now, amen. But I want to encourage you, we don't only have Fridays live at 7 p.m. on Fridays, we have live services Sundays as well, 10 a.m. And also 6 p.m. our Rise Up Church Live Flow services. Again, we've been having our Zoom, also our life group's been on Zoom. If you have the Zoom link, we want to encourage you to connect with your life group leader so they can send you the actual link so you can connect to Anytime we have our, our life groups, again, it's on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. We have our women's life group. We have our men's life group. So for the gang girls and the gang warriors, we want, you to, we want to encourage you to connect to your life group leader. Get your Zoom link and connect with us on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Also, Wednesday services, we have at 7 p.m. our midweek services. Again, they're all online on YouTube and on Facebook. Also, we're having our Veti classes. Come on now. God's anointing now generation. If God is calling you to excel and you're learning to excel in the things of God, we want to encourage you to take this class again. It's going to be April 13th. Actually, they push it all the way to the 20th. But let's be encouraged to jump on as soon as possible. The class is going to be Spiritual Disciplines. There is a book available online. It's Celebration of Discipline. We want to encourage you to order that book, to register and get equipped, come on now, with the word of God and how to serve him. Come on now, amen. Also, this Sunday is going to be a special Sunday services. It's not only is it Easter, it's Resurrection Sunday. Come on now. So it's something to get excited about. Not only that, we're going to be doing something special for those that are going to be viewing online. For those that are locals for Barstow. Come on, we're speaking to the Barstonians. Come on now. A $200 gift card for groceries. It's a gift card, $200 groceries gift card. We're going to be selecting somebody special, a viewer that's going to be viewing in. Now, we're going to tell how you win. So we want you to view in with us Sunday. And we'll explain more how you can win on that day. Also, a child that's going to be viewing will win a $50 Amazon gift card. So we want to encourage you to tune in with us this Sunday. 
It's going to be at 10 a.m. God bless you. How many of us love to worship God? Amen. I know we worship Him with music, with, with different things, right? But how many of us, you could, you could worship Him with your giving? Amen. Because God's anointed now generation know how to worship God. Amen. There's different avenues of worship. And again, I said, giving is one way to worship God. Because that's, that's those are the areas sometimes God wants to check our hearts to see where we're really at. Amen. At that moment where what you got and what makes you comfortable sometimes, right, is that, that cash. Or can I say that feria. Come on, somebody. God's anointed now generation. You guys, you guys know that language? Come on now. That feria or feds. Hey. But that's the moment. Those are the things that make us feel a little bit comfortable, make us feel a little bit secure. How many of us know God is calling us in this time, especially in this time and in this season where a lot of things are going on around the road, a lot of commotion, not a lot of us are working, a lot of different things that are going on. This is a moment where we trust God. But I believe God wants to do something in this time. And I want to, I want to share a scripture with you in 2 Corinthians 8, 12. Whatever you give is acceptable if you give it eagerly. And give according to what you have, not what you don't have. And see, we understand, and I believe God understands this situation, the moment where you're at right now. He wants you to not to be worried about what you don't have, but what you do have out of an eagerness, out of a, a motivation of gratefulness, a motivation of love and gratitude and adoration to God. In the quickness, he's saying, hey, do I still have your heart or do you fear a little bit? Are you scared a little bit? Are you worried a little bit? What were we really fixed on when we, we did have it, when we, we, we were working, we did have a little comfort within our lives. Were we comfortable with the finances? Were we comfortable with what we had? And how about now that we have little, are we still eager to give unto God? I know there's, there's portions of scripture that talks about a, a woman, right? Talks about that woman with the, the ten mites. She was the one with the less in the crowd. A lot of people had more. And they gave out, the, out of their abundance. But this woman, she gave out of a grateful heart. She said, you know what? I have nothing to begin with. God, I wouldn't have nothing if you wouldn't give me anything. You know what? Let me give it all. She had an attitude of worship. She had the type of worship God is asking us to have. And I believe God's anointing now generation. God is calling us to the next level. Amen. Because that's who God is. He said that he gave everything, right? He said if he, for, he, for, he so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. He didn't have to give them up, but he gave them up for our freedom, for what we have today. Amen. Come on now. We're saved. Hello. Salvation. Amen. But I believe God has a, a special word for you here tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and pray for the offering. But right where you're at, God, I want to pray for you as you give tonight. And again, there's many ways for you to give, and they're showing those links online. We have our online giving. We have our... An hour before our services and an hour afterwards, you could come and turn in your traditional tithe. And then also, there's also a Give the Fly app that you could download. And right there, it made, we made it more convenient. So you could get right away, you put in your information and you click on that. And it will send your, your tithe and it will send your offering. Amen. So there's a lot of ways you can do that. But again, we're going to go ahead and pray. Father God, we just ask that you bless those that give tonight, God. And those that can, God. I pray you meet them where they're at, God. Even now, bless their heart, bless their, their, their lives, Father God, for being a part of what you have them a part of, my God. Your place of worship, God. And I pray you meet them, God, in their homes, God, Lord, in, the, in a way, Father God, that they will not be able to forget, God. Touch them in a special way. Be with my brother Edgar as he gives that word, Father God. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you as you give tonight. How many of you guys are, are excited to be right there in your home? Amen. Uh, I'm excited to be here tonight. And uh, before we even start with service, come on now, we just want to, we want to continue to worship. So right there where you're at, just continue to worship. 
You know, may, may, maybe there's still some more distractions or whatever it may be. You know, let's just get into that right atmosphere. And um, let, let's welcome in the presence of God, you know, because I believe God has a special word. So right there in your home, maybe you're not even in your home. Maybe you're in a car somewhere. Maybe you're watching it. You're doing something, right? But you're tuning in because you know that God has a word for you. So let's just worship Jesus. Amen. Right there in your home, ask God to fill you up. Right there in your room, ask God to fill you up with his spirit. Remove all distractions right now. Remove everything that you're going through. Because I believe that God wants to move. That God's not limited to these four walls. That God is not going to, you can put a pause on God. That this coronavirus won't be able to stop our church. Won't be able to stop the work from getting out. So I encourage you, right there in your home, get radical for Jesus. I want you to make some noise for God. I need you to let it all out tonight. Just don't be ashamed of God. Let it all out for Jesus. So right there in your home, don't ever be ashamed. Don't ever be ashamed to worship God. Let your neighbors hear the praise of a gang member of God's anointed now generation. If you're a God's anointed now generation, if you're a gang member, right? I'm talking about God's anointed now generation. If you know you have the DNA of victory outreach, if you know you have the DNA of a gang member, right? Don't let nothing stop your praise. Don't let what's going on in the world, this virus, stop the joy of the Lord inside of you. So remove all distractions right now. Remove everything. Maybe you have family members that are, that are not even of the age, right? But I believe that God even has a word for them. Gather everybody in your home right now. And put them in that living room. Pack them out in that room right now. Because I believe that God has a miracle showing up tonight. And if you believe that tonight, I want you to give Jesus a praise. I want you to get radical for Jesus tonight. And maybe we're not able to hear you. 
So drop all your emojis, right? Drop those hand claps, those praise hands, right? Drop it in the comments. We want to we want to know that you're tuning in. With that being said, we just welcome you in, Lord, tonight. We welcome you, Lord, and we believe, God, that you're going to move in a special way, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, you move, Lord. And we give the service and we place it in your hands, God. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Praise Jesus. Um, God is beautiful, amen. Uh, before we start service, um, I just want to encourage you. Right there in your home, whoever you're with, I want to encourage you to take a selfie right now. Come on now, take a selfie and uh, send us the picture, amen. Drop it right there on the comment, you know. We, we, we want to see you tune in. Um, and you can even tag Victory Outreach Barstow Gang in it, you know. Post it up on your social media. And um, with that being said, um, Make sure you do that, amen, <laughs> amen. And before we, before I even start, what I want to do is, is I want to, I, I want to thank God, amen. I want to thank God for, for being my savior. I want to thank God for, for pulling me out of an ugly place that I was in. So I'm grateful to Jesus, amen. I'm grateful for what he's doing, you know. I also want to thank God. You know, for our founders, Pastor Sonny and Sister Julie, amen, the founders of Victory Outreach, um, just their exampleship and their obedience that, that they gave for this vision so they can see people like us saved, so they can see people like us become a transformation, amen. I also want to thank God for our pastor, Pastor Abel and Sister Raina, amen. Uh, I'm grateful for them and uh, it's a privilege to be, to be part of the church. And I want to thank God for the team, amen. I also want to thank God for all of my leaders and, and the gang team. You know, I, I, none of this would have been able to happen without the team, you know. So I'm thankful for them, every single one of them. From Callie, the gang girl leader, from Ozzy and J.O., you know, it's a privilege to be serving God next to them. You know, and I also want to thank, thank God that, that, that you're tuning in. Maybe you're not even from Barstow and maybe you're just tuning in. I believe God has a word for you tonight too, Amen. And with that being said, uh, I, wa I, I, I want to share a scripture with you. And you can find it in Mark chapter 2, verse 1. And while you guys get there, I'm going to open up with a word of prayer. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you right now, God. And I just pray, Lord, and I ask that you remove every distractions from the homes, God. And that you just move in a special way. That we won't put you in a box. That we won't put limits on you, Lord. And that you speak right now. To the world, my God. Maybe it's not even a young person, Lord. I believe, God, that you still have a special word for them out there, God. In the name of Jesus, I place the service in your hands. And you take full control, God. Because you know how to move, Lord. And I give the service to you, my God. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Right there in your home. Go ahead, like I said. Drop those emojis, amen. Um, I want to share a scripture with you. And you can find it in Mark chapter 2, verse 1. Amen. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read. A few days later, when Jesus entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door. He preached the word to them. Some men... Some men came, bringing to him a paralyzed man, carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging. By digging through it and lowered lower the mat and the man was laying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, son, your sins are forgiven. Now the teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, why does this fellow talk like this? He's blaspheming. 
Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately Jesus knew in his spirit this Immediately, immediately Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, why are you thinking these things? Which is easier to say to this paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven or say, get up, take your mat and walk. Amen. And um, when I titled this message, right, I call it teamwork makes a vision work. I know we hear teamwork makes a dream work, you know, but I, I, I want to put vision in it. Amen. Um, and I just want to share a little bit, a little bit of, of the history, right, of the history of, of this. You know, back then people, right, did not, back then people did not have thick mattresses like we do nowadays. Amen. They didn't have those mattresses like the ones that we have now, right, with the fluffy pillows and everything, right. People simply had a, a mat that they laid on and that was their bed, right. And this is what the paralyzed man was bringing, right? This is what the paralyzed man was laying on. So most likely it was his bed, right? And I know, and I know sometimes you hear like, hey, you make your bed, now you lay in it. Amen. <laughs> and what we can see is, um, what we can see is I kind of, I kind of applied that. I was like, wow, I, was, I started really, I started really, God really started showing me a lot of things when, when all this was happening, right? And I feel like this paralyzed man. Many can relate to this paralyzed man, amen, and in many ways, right, when you're paralyzed, you know, maybe you're not enjoying life to the fullest, right, now, and, 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 now, and now, now there is freedom after the healing, right, but, the, but, but being paralyzed can simply mean, right, sin, right, the struggles, the problems that we go through in life, right, sometimes problems in life, has us paralyzed, right? Sometimes sin in our life, right, has us paralyzed, you know, and uh, it can be depression, right? It can be suicide thoughts. It can be drug addiction, maybe, may, maybe that young people are facing. Maybe you're not even young and you're tuning in. I believe that everybody faces these, these, these things, you know, or can relate to certain things. Right, but what got this paralyzed man is miracle. You know, it, it wasn't him because he wasn't able to get to Jesus. Come on, I wasn't him that was able to get to Jesus. But what it was, it was these four men. It was that team that he had with him. Amen. It was that teamwork. And it was their faith. And how many of us, right, can thank God for these four men? You know, I thank God for these four men. Because sometimes, right, sometimes he, sometimes I look at these four men and I'm like, and I apply it to my leaders. I look at these four men and I'm like, I thank God for these four men. Because you know what that is? Those were leaders that, that carried that man. Those were leaders that carried that man. That they weren't thinking selfish. That they were selfless men. They had a team that was assigned specifically, specifically to him. Just so he can get his miracle. Come on now. Amen. The miracle came. The miracle came, right, when he said, the miracle came when his team picked him up and took him to Jesus. And many, and many, and many, and many in life see the crowd around that door, right. They see it packed out. They see it, it's flooded, right, because Jesus is there. You know, but a beautiful thing is that these men did not give up. These men were like, you know what, many would have thought, hey, maybe we should stop right now. But these men didn't. These men pursued. These men were like, you know what, we're going to get this man his breakthrough. Come on now. Because we know that once, once we get him to Jesus, there's going to be a breakthrough coming. Come on, somebody. And when he went down, right, he got lowered. I like to, I like to look at this. He got lowered to miracle ground, to miracle territory because Jesus was in the mix. And I like to believe that when he, when he went in paralyzed, he came out. Uh, how would you say, a treasure out of darkness, right? He came out of the third waiver. Come on out, because he came out of the new creation. Amen. And how many of us, how many of us know that? I like to look at this house too, like, man, that was that was victory outreach. Come on now, that was a victory outreach because he went in one way, but he came out a different way. 
Come on now. He went in paralyzed. But the next thing you know, it, when he stepped out, he came out a new creation. Amen. And I like to look at this because the signs, right, because Victory Outreach, we know how to pack out a house. We know how to pack out services, right. When miracles happen, that's what's happening in the house, right. And even then, people were going in one way and leaving out another. You know, we're able to see this through our Victory Outreach International, and that's a beautiful thing. But tonight, what I want to focus on is the team that he had around him. It was that, that teamwork, amen, that he had around him. And my, first, and my first point will be the team, amen. Some men came bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. This paralyzed man wasn't able to do it himself, amen. Without his friends, he would have never got that miracle. And I like to ask this question, what type of team do you have around you? Amen. I'm not, I don't want to, I don't want to start, <laughs> but... Amen. Um, what type of team do you have around you, right? Men, men and women that will lead you to, to, to success, right? Or do you have men and women that will be a stumbling block for you? Amen. Because if this paralyzed man has stumbling blocks around him, people that will pull him away from Jesus, I can imagine he would have probably still been paralyzed. He would have died as a paralyzed man. But thank God. That he had a solid team. Thank God that, that he had a team that was willing to give him a VIP pass just to get to Jesus. Amen. And sometimes, right, we have a team who, who are, are good for the moment, right. But then and in the long run, it's not good for our growth. Amen. And I like, to look at, I like to look at the characteristics of a good team member. Right. They got to be. They got to be, I know you hear this a lot, but they got to be fat. Amen. I'm talking about faithful, available, and teachable. Amen. So men that are fat, and I ain't spelling fat with the PH. I'm talking about men that are faithful, women that are available, men and women that are teachable. Amen. You know, I like this because faithful, right, is true to one's word, promise, vow. They're reliable and they're trusted. Right. The team, this team had a, 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 a mission. This team had a, a mission, right? And they were faithful. Because why? Even their presence, they were loyal to this man. They were loyal to him, right? I bet you they gave him his word. They're like, no, nah, man, we're going to get you to Jesus. I bet you he was probably like, I can't even, I can't believe this. Come on, now sometimes we don't even believe it ourselves. <laughs> Right, that's why we need that right team that are faithful. Now, you know what, I don't care what you're saying right now. Maybe you look at yourself a little off right now. But I know that when we get to that roof, I know that when we get into that home, I know that miracles are going to happen. You know why? Because I'm sticking to the word. Maybe I gave you my word. Maybe I gave you everything. And I'm willing to stick it out until we see something great happen in your life. Right? No matter what bumps or, what, or, or, or what you hit on the road, right, you have men that are faithful or women that are faithful, gang members, right, that are faithful lifting you up, right. And you may ask lifting me up how, right, because this man got lifted and he got taken to that roof and, and got brought to Jesus. They made it happen. Amen. In prayer, do you have a team that's praying for you? Come on now, do you have a team that's willing to get on their knees and pray for you? I'm talking about crying for your prayers. I'm talking about they're broken every single morning because they believe that something great's going to come out of you. Or do you have a team, right, that just goes to sleep on you, right? When they see your phone call, they ignore it. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Amen. I don't mean to get a little, huh. I just feel like God gave me this and I want to share it the way God gave it to me. Amen. Amen. Um, a team, right, who's willing to fast for you. That's how you're lifting up your team member, right. You're willing to say, hey, you know what, flesh, maybe I'm hungry, right. Maybe I want to eat right now. Maybe that, that hamburger and that food is real, looking real delicious. But I know that there's a purpose behind the things that I'm doing. So I'm willing to sacrifice. I'm willing to lay it all down. I'm willing to put my own flesh in front of you. 
just so you can get it. Come on now. Come on. Man, a team, right, that's believing in God for you. Like I said earlier, maybe you don't even believe in it yourself. But the team that you have around you does. Come on now, the team that you have around you is willing to believe, is willing to get off common sense for a little bit and willing to say, you know what, I'll believe it. Come on now. Oh, I'm going to be a pastor. Yeah, I'll believe that. Oh, I'm going to be a great man or a great woman of God. Yeah, we believe that. Come on now. Amen. Available, right, suitable or ready for use, right, or use of service. But you're on standby. When they call on you, they know that you're going to make things happen. When they call on you, you know you're going to figure things out. Come on now. Teachable. Capable of being instructed. Oh, come on now. A good team player follows instructions. And the team player, right, sometimes I like to look at it like this. Sometimes we get instructions and we like to, we receive it. But then we go a different direction. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Amen. Uh, my team player understands the principles of the responsibilities. Amen. Sacrifice. And I added these two, sacrifice. And I'm going to be quick because I know due of time. Sacrifice, right? A great example who was sacrificing was Abraham. Because God told him, you know what, I, want, I need you to sacrifice. I need you to sacrifice your own son. Come on, how beautiful is that? I need you to sacrifice your own son. He didn't say, no, I'll think about it. No, I'll pray about it. No, he made it happen. He said, look, son, we're going to that mountain. <laughs> and we're going and, and to make things happen. But just look at everything that he did. He was willing to sacrifice his own son. Sometimes we have a hard time sacrificing little things in life. Amen. Little things. Sometimes this vision will ask, right, the same thing. To sacrifice, right? And believe me, it's not to, it's not to, it's not to, to get under your skin. It's because we have a purpose. We have a plan. It's to reach the world. Come on, us to reach the world. <laughs> Amen. Another one is servanthood. A person in the service of another. Are we really serving our generation? Come on, are we really sticking it out for our generation? You know, sometimes it takes hard work to believe. Come on now, because, because you're, I'm telling you, you're praying for a person and you're believing in God for a person. But you see them going the opposite direction. You pray even more and you lay it down even more. And the next thing you know, they go even further off the road. But you're not going to stop believing. Come on now, it takes hard work sometimes, right? It takes hard work. We want to be able to serve our generation, right? Because once we do it to them, it will be passed down to the next. Come on now, YouTube. Come on, Facebook. Hey, Amen. Whoever's tuning in. And I like to look at it like this. How I like to look at it like this, right, when it comes to servant. The world looks at it like this, right. The higher you go, the less you work. Come on now, but in the kingdom of God, the higher you go, it means the more work you have to put in. Amen. So I just want to, I just, I just want to remind you guys that we have to be fat, fat to, we have, we have to be faithful, available, and teachable to our leaders. Maybe he's not even a leader. Maybe she's not even a leader, but she's a, she, she's a treasure, right? Or he's a treasure. He's a young person, right? That needs help, right? Are we willing to are we willing to make that phone call just to give them the word of God? Are we willing to to pray for them? Are we willing to sacrifice ourselves for them? Or we just we just throw on a suit and just, you know, or we just want to look cool in front of the cameras and, and everything that goes on. Come on now. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> What happens, right, when, I like, this is my second point. What happens when you get around the right team, right? Oh, you start getting in a certain mindset, right? 
you start you start looking at yeah man look I got a solid team right that's how I like to look at my that's how I like to look at the gang team right I got a solid team around me ain't nothing gonna stop us as a matter of fact we're believing that we're gonna pack out this gang service as a matter of fact we're believing and we have a goal and we have a plan and we're gonna pack this thing out that we're gonna see the whole city of Barstow all the young people saved all the young people the colleges the high schools the junior highs screaming and giving praise to Jesus Come on now, this is, this is how I get when I'm around the team. Come on now, that nothing's impossible. Come on now, I don't feel paralyzed when I'm around the team. When I'm around pastor, when I'm around the team members, come on now. I feel like I can take the world. Come on, somebody. If you don't feel like that around your team, I'm sorry to tell you. Maybe you should get around new people. Right? Maybe you need to get around new people that's going to make you grow. And maybe when they're asking you to grow, maybe it's going to hurt a little bit. And it's going to burn. But I'm here to let you know that when God puts the right people around you, you're going to be able to raise up a generation. You're going to be able to raise up a nation. Come on now. I'm not aiming. We're not aiming for little things. We're aiming for big things. Come on now. A generation. Because there's a generation hurting out there. There's a lot of young people out there. They don't even have to be young. They can be adults in their 30s going all the way to their 80s that can be paralyzed. But who's bringing the word of God out them to them? Come on now. This is the gang ministry. This is a gang service. We're God's anointing our generation. And this is how we move. And this is how we think. Amen. Right. You're able to do more and you're able to accomplish more when you get the right people around you. Amen. I'm praying someone's receiving something tonight. <laughs> when you get around the right team, right, you know you're going to success. Come on now. You know success is not even an option. It's a must. Amen. I like to, I like to see like this. When you come around the right team, you know, you, you know when you're the little brother and you have your big brother and you're walking around the streets, right, and you ain't tough, but your brother is. Amen. But your brother's going to back you up. You know, but you're walking out there with your head up, right? You're walking out there like confident, like, Psh, you guys ain't going to mess with me. Why? Because of who he has behind him. He has a big brother. He has a teammate. Come on now. He has, he has, and I like that because when, we, when he walks with his head up, he knows, right? He's confident. He knows that, that, that he has a solid person right behind him. Come on now. I can imagine this paralyzed man thinking like that. Man, these men are lifting me up. Come on now, these men are carrying me. They could have stopped when they seen the house packed out, but they didn't. They seen an obstacle, and they're like, you know what that means? Is that means there's a breakthrough coming. Come on now, you know what that means? That means there's a miracle around the corner. Amen. Maybe the world would like to see, maybe the world would like to say, oh, yeah, I see death around the corner, right? Well, I love with Jesus, man, because Jesus sees miracles around the corner. Amen. Man, right, when you surround yourself ar around the right team, they make things happen. Amen. Maybe you're going through, maybe you're going through certain things, but when you're around the right team, they bring revival to you. Come on now, revival. And I believe this is, the, this is what God's doing right now. When you're around the right team, they know how to remove that obstacle. They know how to dig. They know how to do hard work for you. And I like to look at, I like to look at this is, when you're, now let's say, Maybe you don't have the right team around you. Oh, come on now. Maybe you have a bad team. Amen. I wouldn't even call them a team. Come on, somebody. I wouldn't even call them a team. Because you can't even call on them. Come on now. Amen. <laughs> um, I want to share Luke chapter 17. It would be better to them to be thrown into the sea with a milestone tied around their neck. Than to cause one of these little ones to stumble. I can imagine the Pharisees. I can imagine because they were haters. 
come on now. They were haters. I'm telling you, they were haters. They were still hating after they seen that miracle happen. They were like, what is this? Hey, who are you to say that? Come on now. They were hating on that miracle. Don't be surprised when you're around the wrong team. That, 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 that when you start getting your breakthrough, right, they're trying to pull you down. When you start walking a little different, they try to pull you away from church. Amen. The wrong team will pull you away from the things of God. Amen. They'll bring division, right. They will even love to pump discouragement into you. Come on now. Amen. I'm just, I'm trying to expose the devil. That's it. Amen. Um. Sometimes they will even bring fear, right? And you know where the trip is, right? They, 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 they will even remove soldiers from the battlefield because of fear. Because it was contagious, right? Bad company corrupts good character. Come on, somebody. Amen. I hope someone's catching it out there. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Uh, a bad teammate, right, will love would love to talk good in front of you. Want to talk up a good game in front of you, right? A good game. Once they get behind your back, once they hit that corner, come on out, once they hit that corner. All the division and everything starts sparking up. Amen. And I love to call the worship team up. And man, and I just tonight, I just, I know, I, 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 I know God was, I, I know in the scripture God was talking about, hey, like, um, it's a miracle. Yeah, I believe that. But tonight, I just wanted to focus on these four men because they had a strong team. He had a strong team around him. Some beautiful men. Come on, now they had the beautiful spirit, amen, the right attitude. You know, and tonight I just wanted to focus on the team, the, the teammates that he had around him. Amen. So I want to encourage you. Surround yourself around four women, maybe four women, four men, right? Surround yourself around the right people. The right people. The right people that are going to get you. To your breakthrough, that are going to get you to Jesus, that are going to get you, that are willing to dig for you, that are willing to tear the roof off for you. Come on now, that are willing to lay it down for you. Because these men were selfless. These men were great men of God. Great men of God. The beautiful thing about it, right, is that the miracle was already planted for him, right? And I believe God has a miracle planned out for you tonight. Maybe you're not in the building right now. Maybe we're limited on what we're able to do. But I know that God is still able to move. So maybe right there in your home, I want to I wanna ask that if you could stand up. Right there in your home, right there wherever you're at. Let's just stand up. Amen. The beautiful thing is that, that the miracle is already planned out for this man. And I believe God has a miracle planned out for you too. Come on now. And the, 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 the other thing I like to look at, right, is maybe before God, right, we were paralyzed, right? Maybe before God, we were stuck on drugs. Drugs had us paralyzed, right? Maybe being around the environment had us paralyzed. Maybe being around the, around the wrong people, it had us paralyzed. We couldn't move. We couldn't do nothing about it. But I thank God. I said, I thank God for, for, for men like this. I thank God for the women and the men of God of Victory Outreach that are laying down their life for this cause. Because they're like these four men. Come on now, like these four men that said, nah, look, you may be down and out right now, right? You may be shot out right now, right? Maybe you're not doing your best right now. Maybe you're praying for that sister. Maybe you're praying for that dad, for that mom, for that cousin. Or maybe you're even praying for your homie, right? Because he's paralyzed. But we need a gang ministry. I'm talking about we need a gang ministry that's going to lift up that paralyzed person. And, it's not, and, when the, and when you carry them and when you lift them up, right, 
You don't drop them on the way. Come on now. You're lifting them up and you're taking them all the way to what's breakthrough. You're taking that young person all the way to their calling. Right? It's a beautiful thing we're able to see throughout the church. Treasures. People that were being lied to by the enemy. And now they're men and women of God. Only God's able to do that. But I thank God for my leaders. I thank God for my team. For the team that he has assigned to me. I thank God. Because when I was lost, right? When I was lost on drugs, someone reached out to me. Come on now. They, were, they, had, they had the DNA of these four men. And I feel like that DNA is running through the third wave right now. Amen. And at the end, right, at the end, I'm thankful, right, at the end, you're able to see, I can imagine, right, at the end, what, how this man felt. How this man felt. Hey. I thank God for those leaders. I thank God for these four men. I thank God for my team. Because if it wasn't for them, right, if it wasn't for their faith, if it wasn't for their hard work, if it wasn't for their dedication, it wouldn't have happened. What are we doing with our generation nowadays? Come on on social media. Are we flooding our social media with selfies, right? All of our social media that has nothing to do with God in it. Come on now. Or are we flooding it with the purpose and the cause of victory outreach? Amen. I can also imagine this. I, tri I tripped out on this. It's because it had to take some time to tear that roof off. Come on now. It had to take some time to tear that roof off. But I can imagine how Jesus was thinking. He was preaching, right? When you're around a good teammate, a good team member, they're going to bring you to hear the word of God. They ain't going to try to keep you away from that. They're going to bring you a little closer so you can hear the word of God, so it can get inside of your spirit. Come on now, and not just that, I can imagine Jesus, how he was thinking. When he heard that tearing of the roof, I can imagine what was going through his mind. He, I bet you he was getting warm hearted, right? I bet you he was getting excited. You know why? It's because he was like, look, look at these men. That's a sign right there. I bet you he was even preaching about it when he was speaking to the crowd at that moment. You know, I bet you I can imagine what he was saying. Look, you see that? They're tearing the roof off. I need people, a God's anointed now generation to have this type of faith. A God's anointed now generation to be united like this where they're going to tear off the roof for the generation that's behind them. That generation includes your brother. That generation includes your sister. Right? I bet she was getting excited. Because that was a miracle. That was a beautiful thing that was coming down. That was revival. Come on now. That was revival that was happening inside of that home. They did anything. They did everything that they can to get that man to Jesus. So right there where you're at, I don't want to say anymore. Just invite Jesus. Maybe you're paralyzed in a certain area. Ask God to heal you tonight. And I will reach the world.
the tearing of the roof. You know what it was signs of? The tearing of the roof. You know what that was signs of? That was signs of a tears of a person that's desperate. Desperate. And the beautiful thing is they weren't even desperate for themselves. Oh, come on now. I hope you caught that. They weren't even desperate for themselves, right? They were desperate for someone else. But you know what happened after that? Here comes the, here comes the greater part. You know what happened after that? When that man got healed, you know what he did? It says this. Let me take you there real quick. I tell you, get up. Take your mat and go home. The same, remember what I was saying earlier? They made their bed, right? That was their bed. That's what they made. That was all their sin, right? But he told them, take your mat and go home. Basically, go home and testify. Go home and, and tell the world about what I just did inside of you. Come on now. I bet you when he walked out, he was excited. I bet you when he came out the house, I bet you he was running and he was jumping and he was excited. Why? Because of that miracle that came inside of his life. Thank God for your leaders. Thank God for your pastor. Thank God for the ones that are sacrificing for you. Thank God for the leaders that are laying down their life in prayer, in the in sacrificing, in the fasting. Thank God that we have leaders, men and women of God, that are willing to lay it down for you. Because you know what that means, is you're able to jump, you're able to shout, you're able to tell the world about the goodness of God. You're able to tell the world, you know what, I was a drug addict. You know what, maybe I was suicidal. You know what, maybe I was drowning in depression. But thank God for their prayers. Thank God for my leaders. Because once they invested in me, and they didn't give up, once they invested in me, I'm a new creation. I'm a man of God now. I'm no longer that person that the world used to pay me as. And this is what we're doing with the gang. If you're looking at it as a game, right, you have the wrong mindset. This ain't a game. This is God's anointing our generation. We have a purpose behind us. And this is our purpose, getting people to Jesus' feet and seeing their miracles happen. So I want to encourage you tonight. Maybe you're praying for your sister. Maybe you're praying for your mom. Maybe you're praying for your wife. Maybe you're praying for your brother, your niece, and your nephew. Don't give up. I'm telling you, that paralyzed, that paralyzed, it's going to get healed. That miracle is going to happen. And they're going to dance. And they're going to shout. Come on now. They're going to shout. They're going to be able to scream. Thank you, God. That you did something beautiful with me. Thank you, God. For the people. So right there where you're at, I just want you to bow your head. And I just want you to repeat this prayer after me. Right there in your homes. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you. And I admit, I am a sinner. And I believe you died on the cross for me. And rose on the third day. And I confess you as my Lord and Savior, in Jesus' name, come into my life and take full control. Amen. I'm going to pray for the service. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you right now, God. I pray, Lord, that this word, my God, landed on good soil, God. I pray that you raise up a gang ministry, God. That God's anointing our generation, Lord, has going to be sold out for you, God. That surrounds themselves around the right people, Lord. In the name of Jesus, God, I place the service, God, and I pray that it's sealed inside of their hearts, Lord, the word, my God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for everybody that's tuning in. I pray for their personal battles and their struggles, my God. We're believing. Maybe they're paralyzed, God, but surround them around the right people, God. In the name of Jesus.
take full control. Amen. Amen. So right there where you're uh, if you have a prayer request, go ahead and drop it on the comment. May, or, may, or maybe it's too deep. Drop it on our page. Amen. That being said, let's just close out. Don't forget, next week, 7 p.m., gang night. Amen. God bless.